there. Welcome to another edition of Know Your History. Well, the calendar may say January, but I'm ready to hit the beach, as you can see. Um, and when we go to the beach, we always go to historic Cape May, New Jersey, the nation's oldest seaside resort. And a lot of people have been going there for many years, and Cape May is known for its spectacular Victorian architecture and the uh, salubrious salt water and sea air and the latest in swimwear fashion. But that's not the Cape May that I wanted to talk to you about. Today I wanted to talk about the origins of historic Cape May as a whaling uh, village and it started in 1635 on the Delaware Bay uh, near the mouth of the ocean at what they called a place called Town Bank in 1635 and whalers from uh, New England and Long Island came to uh, settle there. Uh, but before the whalers came, of course, the Native Americans, the Lenni Lenape, uh, enjoyed much as we do the, their summers at the Jersey Shore. Uh, there they would uh, and they enjoyed swimming and clamming and fishing and boating. Uh, and perchance, if a um, dead well happened to wash up on the beach, it was uh, uh, called a drift well in the parlance of the whalers. Uh, it was a great boon to the Native Americans. But the whalers weren't content to wait for a drift well to come ashore. They would go out in search of the whales and there are uh, little whale boats, six men to a boat, four oarsmen, a steersman, and a harpooner. And they would be searching for uh, the whales that were um, close to shore. And of course, their um, weapons would be the harpoon uh, with sharp barbs to uh, fasten onto the whale, and the harpoon was attached. Um, to a long coil of rope which would play out. Sometimes the whale would pull the whale boat on what was known as a Nantucket sleigh ride. Eventually the whale would tire and the uh, whale boat would pull alongside and uh, finish the whale off with long 12-foot lances uh, stabbed into the whale's um, vital organs. It was a bloody nasty business. Apparently, there were a lot of whales in the Delaware Bay in the 1600s. In fact, this man, William Penn of Philadelphia, when he wasn't uh, promoting Quaker Oats, he wrote, uh, and I quote, Mighty whales roll upon the coast near the mouth of the Bay of Delaware. Eleven caught and worked into oil one season. We justly hope a considerable profit by whalers. They, that is the whales, being so numerous and the shore so suitable. Now, William Penn wrote those words in 1683. Now, the whale they were searching for was probably this whale, known as the right whale. Now, you can see the right whale is, uh, doesn't have a dorsal fin. Uh, it doesn't have teeth. It has what's called baleen plates. And on its nose or rostrum are callosities. Callosities are like calluses that you would get on your fingertips, only the right whale's callosities are covered with whale lice, that is, tiny crustaceans. And uh, he was a slow swimmer. Um, now, people ask, well, why did they call this whale the right whale? Well, that's because uh, the right whale never liked to swim left. He never liked, like old people, he never liked to make a left-hand turn. He always went right. Ah, I'm just messing with you. Actually, he was called the right whale because he was fat, slow, and stupid. Well, not really stupid, but he was fat because he had a lot of high uh, blubber oil content in his blubber. They grew to be about 40 to 50 feet long and possibly 50 tons. And um, he was a slow swimmer that hugged the coast. So he became known as the right whale to kill, as opposed to some other more aggressive species of whale. Um, so the right whale was killed to, um, render whale oil, 
uh, to uh, which burn clean and bright in these uh, whale oil lamps. And you didn't have to rely on your candle going out. You had a nice whale oil lamp. And also, um, the baleen in the whale's mouth, the right whale's mouth, uh, was called whalebone, by the way, by the, uh, the whalers. And the uh, whalebone looked like it looks like Venetian blinds. And on the other side of the whalebone, which is made out of keratin, by the way, the same substance as your fingernails, uh, they, they act like a giant sieve. That, uh, uh, and it's interesting, one of the largest creatures on Earth. Here, he's feeding on uh, one of the smallest creatures, copepods, and also krill, small fish-like crustaceans in the water. And the right whale would swim along uh, like a cow grazing in the sea. Now that baleen, the baleen plates would provide um, stays for horses. Also uh, paracels, hoop skirts, so the right whale was really a sacrifice to fashion. There were a lot of other uses for the, uh, for the baleen in the age before plastics, so whalebone was very important uh, to the whaling industry. Now, whaling was uh, dangerous and dirty work. And it was dangerous because, well, sometimes the whale won. Just one uh, swipe of the whale's uh, tail or flukes would uh, overturn a whale boat and uh, could reduce it to uh, matchsticks. So it was very hazardous and uh, hard work. Plus, once you uh, killed the whale, that was another feature of the right whale, was the right whale floated after it was killed because of the high oil, as I mentioned, and its blubber, and they could uh, tow it to shore and cut it up, uh, put the, the, uh, the sections of blubber into uh, tripods and uh, render them in, you know, burn them down and render them into oil. Very. Um, smelly and uh, arduous business. Now, the, the community at Town Bank uh, was so successful, they were too successful because after a time, well, they ran out of whales. They would have to um, row out deeper and deeper and into the ocean where they might encounter a whale like this, a, a uh, giant, uh, a sperm whale. Now, the sperm whale, you recall uh, from uh, Herman Melville's classic novel, Moby Dick. Uh, Moby Dick was a sperm whale, but that was later in the, uh, in the mid 19th century. And here's a sperm whale that you might encounter. Uh, sperm whales are deep divers and they like the deeper waters because they feed on their favorite prey, the giant squid. But if they were able to get a hold of a sperm whale, that was the best oil of all. The, the uh, sperm whale uh, produced that and it was um, a very fine lubricant and it burned uh, in lanterns the cleanest and brightest of all the uh, whale oil. However, um, they were hard to catch and much more aggressive than the docile right whale. Now the whaling, fortunately for the whales, the whaling industry died out before the American Revolution. And soon Cape May uh, turned to the tourism industry. Now we have, uh, now we hunt whales just to watch them. So there, uh, in 1987, there was, uh, began the Cape May Whale Watch. Of course, um, sometimes there aren't any whales to see because the, particularly the right whales, uh, they're so hunted, there are only about 400 or so left, the North Atlantic right whale, uh, left in existence, even despite the fact that been under the protection uh, of the Endangered Species Act since 1934, they have not made a recovery as other whale species, uh, such as the sperm whale have. They've made somewhat of a comeback, but right whales lead a precarious existence. Uh, today we don't hunt them, we just run them over with our container ships and passenger liners, and sometimes the right whales get entangled in uh, fishing gear, and it's uh, uh, very tragic. So whaling may be gone in, uh, in Cape May, but you don't have to look too far to see 
a legacy. Here uh, you might want to uh, check out this restaurant, uh, Harp Harpoon Henry's. I'm not sure what's on the menu, but uh, while you're there, you, they might uh, serve you. You might want to order up a, uh, a Captain May from the Cape May Brewing Company. A Captain May IPA. Now, I don't think he looked like that. Um, he probably looked more like this. Captain Jacobson Cornelius May, who uh, sailed into Delaware Bay in 1632, uh, saw the peninsula, and modestly named it after himself, Cape May. So that's pretty much the story of Cape May and its origins as a whaling port. Uh, today we enjoy it as uh, much more as um, a seaside resort. And uh, once in a while we get to see some dolphins swimming by. And uh, we remember that uh, at one time the whalers uh, set out into the bay and the bay must have been full of right whales. Well, that's all we have time for. Uh, thank you for watching, and um, I hope you'll turn in, tune in next time for another edition of Know Your History. So, hey, you kids, I saw that. I gotta go. I'll be back.